Hey y'all, welcome back to the Closet Recording Studio for today's poem of the day. This poem is called Languages by Carl Sandburg. Um, stick around afterwards for some bonus analysis content if you need a jumping off point for an essay or something like that. So, anyway, here we go. There are no handles upon a language whereby men take hold of it and mark it with signs for its remembrance. It is a river, this language, once in a thousand years breaking a new course, changing its way to the ocean. It is a mountain of fluvia, moving to valleys and from nation to nation, crossing borders and mixing. Languages die like rivers. Words wrapped round your tongue today and broken to the shape of thought between your teeth and lips speaking now and today shall be faded hieroglyphics ten thousand years from now. Sing and singing, remember your song dies and changes and is not here tomorrow any more than the wind blowing ten thousand years ago. All right, here we have entered into the bonus analysis section of this video. Um, he's working, obviously, with a metaphor of language as a river, right? Or as a, as a natural thing, as something like that from the natural world. Um, there are no handles on languages. Like, he's arguing against the idea that, that somebody should be able to control language or somebody should be in charge of language or whatever. Um, it's a river, right? And a river does always go generally the same course, um, and it cuts the same course, um, but it does you know, spread out sometimes. Um, it takes down some parts of the banks. Um, it breaks a new course, changing as way I wanted to write on the screen. Um, it breaks a new course, changing its way to the ocean. Um, and it moves from valleys and nation to nation, crossing borders and mixing. So... You always want to look for, when you're analyzing a poem, the turn or where the argument shifts a little bit, right? So the beginning, um, <clears throat> you can't hold, the argument is that you can't hold or control the changing and the motion of language any more than you can control or change the motion of a river, right? Um, but then he switches it up right here. Um, from here down. Um, languages also die like rivers, um, which, and rivers don't normally die, honestly, unless their spring runs out, but they kind of, um, sometimes they dry up, right? Um, and that kind of thing. So words, but, th but they would also do that mostly a little bit at a time, right? A little drop and drop and drop, and they'll get a little less and a little less and a little less. Um, think of it like um, Anglo-Saxon, the antecedent of what our modern English is, or one of the antecedents of it, or um, Chaucer's English and that kind of thing, right? You, those are, that's the next one that comes after Anglo-Saxon, and you would not recognize it really if you heard it spoken today, um, probably, most of you anyway, um, unless there's some, you know, Chaucer scholars out there, high Chaucer scholars, but most people wouldn't recognize it's being spoken today, but it still counts as English. Um, and in the same way, um, like, that will be faded hieroglyphics. The words we're speaking now will be faded hieroglyphics 10,000 years from now, too. Uh, even though that in Chaucer's English wasn't 10,000 years ago. It was like six or 700. But um, anyway, that's not the point of this. So it's it's a... It's a meditation, I guess, on both permanence and impermanence. Like, there will always be a river or always be a riverbed, as in, you know, there always will be a language or language somewhere, right? But it will not look the same 10,000 years from now as it does now. Um, I love, I have to point this out before I go, though. Um, I have to point out, with the words wrapped around your tongue today and broken to the shape of thought between your lip, teeth and lips speaking, Man, that's such a cool metaphor. Like the words as like physical, tangible objects. Um, and they like wrap around your tongue. And when you speak them, they break to come out of your mouth. That's, that's such a cool, cool metaphor. Um, and um, that needs to make your way in, it's your way its way into your essay somehow. Um, I think it's pretty, pretty awesome. So anyway, so we're during a pandemic right now, so take care of yourselves, wash your hands a lot, um, wear masks if you go outside, and I will see you next time. Take care, y'all.
This video is a production of Thomas and Morris Instruction. The authors of this video would like you to like the video or share it or subscribe to our channel to help goose the YouTube algorithm. Thank you.